Welcome back to the Final Fantasy Tactics All Oracles Challenge being recorded here in January 2022. This is the one many of you may have been waiting for, certainly one that I have been waiting for, looking to see how it goes here in one of the game's most famously difficult battles, the Golgorand Execution Site. You might want to strap in for this one. This is going to be a bit of a longer video, as you probably saw from the timestamp. You may want to watch this one in uh, one and a half times speed if you uh, want to catch this in the <laughs> in a reasonable amount of time. It looks about 35 minutes long here. I'm going to record it in real time, so uh, we're going to strap in and enjoy this one together. This is a battle in hindsight that I'm pretty proud of, I have to say. I found some really interesting <laughs> strategies, had to improvise a little bit, and uh, we made it on top. This was actually the first attempt at this battle. I was very surprised at that. I don't mean that to be a braggadocio, but this was uh, just, I came in not expecting to win this one at all. I really just wanted to see how the characters would perform, and I wanted to try some things out to uh, just throw everything at the wall. But partway through the battle, I noticed that the tide uh, was turning a little bit towards, uh, towards us. So I went from kind of trying everything to really making a serious attempt at, at winning, and we actually got there. This is where the oracles really shined with their diversity of skill sets. One of the reasons I chose the oracle was because of that diversity. They, they have many different paths to success, which is why I wanted to try them out. And this battle will really showcase that both the um, there, there's defensive uh, capabilities, there's some, obviously, some couple of ways to do damage with the physical attacks and sticks and with the drain life. They can recover life that way. They can get MP as they move. And all of those things are going to come into play here. So the biggest, well, there's two huge challenges with this battle. If you're not familiar with, with this one already, one, I'm not sure why you're watching this video if you don't know this game very well. But uh, this battle is famously hard because you're outnumbered. You're also outpositioned. You, we are, you've got five characters that I think is eight 8 to 5 is the um, the numerical disadvantage, just checking everyone's um, equipment and, and abilities here. So the looking at the archers uh, to see if they have crossbows or longbows. So you've got a tactical disadvantage because your party is split. I've got two characters under the gate there and three characters up on the wall. And then they have three characters up high and they have five characters down below, one of whom is Gafgarian, who will... Uh, really do a ton of damage and drain you as he does it. So generally in this battle, the first thing that you do is you try to scare Gafgarian out of here. You try to uh, get him into critical status so that he teleports out. Then you can deal with the rest of these enemies, which are no slouches themselves after that. So the oracles here, in, in other in other kinds of strategies, like in my archers run of this one, we really just kind of hold up on that corner and just kind of used range attacks on everybody using the um, just the wait strategy to to get more turns because of CT. But the oracles, that's not really going to be an option because we're going to run out of MP very quickly. Even though our MP pool is is fairly large, we're going to run out quickly. So what you're noticing Ramza do there is he's he's targeting a spell be because at the beginning of the battle. The CT for most of the characters is pretty high. So most of us, or most of the enemies, will get a turn before we can cast these spells. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm putting, uh, I'm charging some sleeps or paralyzes on tiles around our characters with the assumption that that knight there is going to move up to us. So if I targeted it on him, he would move up to us and then attack us anyway while we're charging and then uh you know we'd get that as well so by targeting it around us i'm thinking the knight may move into that spell i don't know if that's really the best strategy that was just one of the things i was trying out to see if it would work uh, i just kind of thought hey if i target a sleep around our characters maybe the knights will move into it and then get hit by it because in that first round is when things are a little bit more critical so I'm trying to get my other oracles that are down there by Gafgarian, I'm trying to get them out of harm's way. I'm trying to get them taken care of. Uh, just to get them where they're bunched up with our other oracles. But having them move that far across open uh, combat zone is, is not an easy proposition. And it's not something I want them to expose. Because really, if any character hits the floor in, in this battle, in the early stages of it, it's pretty much a reset. Because I don't want to lose... A bunch of characters. <laughs> if anyone hits the ground, it's pretty much reset. 
Okay, so Gavgarian, luckily, he seems pretty susceptible to being hit with stuff. I, I don't remember what his faith number is, but it seems like we, we can land our stuff on Gavgarian fairly easily. So our drains are going to hit him, and he's going to get hit with Don't Act uh, a good few times in this fight, as you'll see. So there's the knight, as, as expected, moving up to attack our characters. Now, our characters do have defense up. So that would have done more damage had we not had that one, but because we're charging, it does it does more damage. So we could have maybe with those oracles not cast anything in the first round and let the knight just come up and attack us and then go to work on him. But it's just something to think about for uh, for future attempts if they were needed. Again, I, uh, to clarify why I did some of the things in the opening part of this battle was to really try some things out. So where you see things not working out very well, <laughs> that was me just experimenting. So the time mages are gonna be troublesome. They can get they can get a few kind of nasty things going. Now Gafgarian here has been hit with the drain, and now he's in don't act. So he's actually been nullified for the time being. And now slow is going to land on one oracle, and it's going to be blocked by the other one. So we do have the mantles here in this battle as well. I should say. I think it's the wizard mantle, whatever the best mantle accessory is at this part in the game. And uh, this this is where I've used mantles more than any other run through this game. I've said before, I almost always exclusively use the movement items because it just seems like when you're kind of being aggressive and you have access to a lot of different things, then, you know, you can you can uh, use those movement items more to your advantage. Now, I did move that oracle right into the sleep zone, so it was, <laughs> it was not the right move uh, to get her down there. I'm not sure how I just lost track of where my sleep zone was. So she got hit with sleep, and it's actually... Um, it does less damage to do a life drain than to do a physical attack with these guys. So, um, to wake her up, it's actually easier to do a life drain, um, and it does less damage to the, to the target. So, that's why you see me using a life drain here instead of the physical attack with the rods, which would have done more damage. Anyway, that was a bit of a tactical misplay, which you would think in a battle like this where the margin is so tight, you wouldn't be able to survive something like that. <laughs> a huge error. But, oh well. Anyway, Gafgarian gets his turn, but he's in Paralyzed, so he's going to just run away. He's just going to get get out of the battle, and like, thankfully, thankfully, thankfully. So, Gafgarian, just get out of here. That night, uh, we're going to target him with the Paralyzed. Just try to keep ourselves protected for a little while. The Archers are going to become problems in this fight. You know, they're going to be bad because they can hit us, especially the one with the longbow. If she gets up high, she can hit us from almost anywhere. The one that's on the gallows platform is uh, equipped with a crossbow, so it's going to be a little harder. Her um, her range is going to be more defined. It can't be extended by height. But that archer, it makes a little more sense for that archer to have a crossbow because she's kind of right there in the in the middle of things, so it's not going to be as much of a handicap for her. So I was attempting, I think, a life drain on that uh, time mage up there because both because we've taken some damage from archers. Now, life drain is going to be really important in this battle. You're going to see it more than we have in a lot of other battles because we just don't have the stamina to fight a long, long battle with these guys. We're going to take hits here and there, especially from archers. So uh, you're going to see more, more life drain use than just petrify everybody because we actually need that recovery. Not just to damage the enemies, but we actually will need that recovery. Especially when we put our own characters to sleep and have to life drain them to uh, wake them up. <laughs> because, yeah, the, the archer, that archer down there is going to be moving around a lot and just kind of plinking us. We're not going to take tons of damages, damage from the archers, but it is going to add up over the course of a long fight. So if we couldn't recover with life drain, it would be a big problem. So that knight's going to have the same thing happen, where he got hit with Don't Act, and then is going to just retreat for us. So that's good to get them out of there, while we kind of move ourselves into to turtle up. Later on in this fight, though, you're going to see turtling up is not, even that is not always the right decision, because of, because the archers, pro, pro, they pose that problem of that distance. Uh, but so if we just kind of like hang out over there and let the enemies come to us, the archers can kind of keep plinking us from a distance before we can get to them. So eventually we, you'll see us actually start to move out of that formation once we have a little bit more control of the battle. It's actually a really interesting tactical battle, as this always is. So we're going to cast, or we're going to charge silence on that time mage. 
And we're gonna, that time age is gonna be marked for silence. I've talked about this before. When you have casters who have a silence spell being charged on them, they will, on their turn, they will decline to try to cast a spell that they think that they're going to fail by the time the spell resolves in the AT list. So there was a movement on the Oracle just to get uh, some MP back. Just kind of a waiting move right there, like in chess, where you just kind of perform a, an in-between move to force the en enemy to move. Uh, so that Time Mage, when she gets a turn, uh, she's going to think, hey, I'm going to have Silence charged on me or cast on me before I can do anything. And so she just declined to cast a spell. Now, if Silence had missed, then that, that would be, a, you know, of course, a nice wasted action for her anyway. So even just charging Silence on a character who's about to get a turn can have a good effect for you, even if it missed. Now, it did hit, so for the next few rounds, that Time Mage is going to be uh, incapacitated. But here's another example of just the, the archers doing that, that plink damage, you know, just, just taking little bits here and there. So this oracle is going to get a chance to target a spell, and I'm seeing what's going to have a higher chance to hit and is going to net me more hit points. So this a higher chance to hit is a little bit more important right now. So she's going to charge the light drain, and then she's going to try to just move as far as she can uh, to get out of range and to bunch up with the other oracles if she can. Because I'm not really worried about the time mages casting any big AoE stuff on us for a little while. I'm really more worried about uh, getting a couple of, of enemies knocked out. Once your numerical disadvantage is equalized, it's a little bit easier. Of course, Gafgarian is in Don't Act right now, but as I say that, he has been healed of Don't Act. That expires on Gafgarian. So he is now hasted and he's fully capable again. So he's going to be moving into back into the fray here as, as had his earliest convenience, his earliest possibility to do so. And with haste, that's not going to take long. And the archers are charging another attack on our oracles who are moving. Now, missing that life drain was not critical. It wasn't battle ending, but it was not what you want. You really want to be landing as many of those life drains as you can. Because we're just going to need to be uh, healed as much as possible. Haven't seen much healing out of the enemies yet. So, you know, damage that we do to them is more likely to stick, with the exception, of course, of Gafgarian, who can heal himself up with the uh, with the Night Sword. But Gafgarian, as we saw before, is pretty susceptible to statuses that we cast on him, and also to Life Drain, too, as, as we'll see later in the end. Um, so it's not going to be too bad to to keep him kind of under wraps while we work on the rest of these characters. And there's another archer charging on um, charging on our characters. So that that, uh, that plink damage from the archers, you know, you can see it's adding up here. So now I'm looking around. She is within range of casting a Petrify, or sorry, on a Paralyze um, that will go before Gafgarian. So we're going to try to get Gafgarian paralyzed again. It's hard to get a good angle to see sometimes in this battle, so you'll see me turning the map a lot. <laughs> to try to get a better angle around the uh, the platform in the middle there. So another life drain, another miss on those archers. Um, that's, and that's a big chunk of MP that's gone. And uh, unfortunate <laughs> that that's, that's what's going to happen here. A big chunk of MP just wasted. Now I'm also using, I should say for, for gear... Um, I'm not using all of the best MP boosting items. I'm not using the wizard robe um, or the, the the best hat, triangle hat, I think it is right here. I'm using the the H the better HP boosting items. So I'm using like the wizard outfit, I think it is. That gives you a little bit more hit points. Uh, and then there's uh, another piece of headgear, a thief hat or something maybe that, that is kind of the, the medium armor that does more HP, less MP. So we will gain less MP for each movement. So if we were using wizard robes, we'd be gaining like 9 and 10. But I think we're gaining like 8 MP per move. But the extra hit points I thought were a little bit more important to start the battle with. Another like 10 or 12 hit points because that's just, that's another attack that you could eat. Um, and also later on when we're using drain life, we can store more hit points as we're, as we're draining more life away. But those archers so far really have been the MVPs for the enemies. The knights, uh, well, one knight got petrified right away. The other knight got put into Donak status and kind of ran away. The third knight has not really been able to chase us down just yet. 
but you can see me kind of prioritizing, you know, when can I use my drain life and uh, how much how much effectivity can I have with that. So a little bit better chance to land it on the knight, but the knight is not as immediate of a threat as the archer is. So we're going to try to maybe paralyze that archer and bring some enemies down towards us. And also the thinking here is that I can maybe use our uh, paralyze on this uh, on this other knight, depending on what I can do and where I can move to. Checking the name to see when she'll get turns. And looking for her name on the uh, on the AT list. We're at this. This is near the point in the battle where I I stopped kind of trying random things and started like maybe trying to win. When I saw that Gafgarian can be kind of made to run away so quickly and so easily, and once I got past the opening foray and re recovered from that uh, bad tactic of uh, <laughs> casting a sleep. I guess it wasn't a bad tactic to put a sleep spell around us. It was a bad tactic to forget where it was and then move somebody into it. But uh, that might be something to try later is to charge a spell around you in the zone where you know enemies are going to move, kind of bait them in. But here's our... So Ramza's going to actually move a little bit into the, into the battle here just so that he can reach some of these characters. And he's got... He's not sure what to do now. This uh, committing to that move... Uh, may have been a tiny bit premature for him, but he has plenty of um, of hit points to to recover. You know, if he does take a couple of hits here, so we're going to try to see what we can cast. What's going to have the what's what's he going to have decent compatibility for? Which not on this guy for sure, not on this knight definitely. And he's checking checking that archer again. Who can I hit with stuff? And Paralyze is going to go just before Rosa gets a chance to go, so he's going to try that on Rosa. So we're moving our um, our, our turtle <laughs> formation. We're moving our, our block. Kind of, we're doing, again, I've called this like the wheel uh, with these guys, where you kind of move your, your units as a, as a squad around the battlefield, around a corner. And with us, it's going to be even more important because we have to move so much to recover MP. We're, we're kind of going to do that wheel around this fight. So another archer moving in. Um, five tiles is kind of a lot in this battle, and things are pretty wide open. There's not really much structure to hide behind, so even the bow gun that goes three to five or uh, three to four can uh, can get to you pretty pretty easily. They can kind of stay centered in the on the platform and just kind of go to town. So now I have more enemies that are coming down to that platform, to that, uh, to the center of the the battlefield, and that's why I'm moving us down a little bit more because the the archers are going to keep flinking us from the middle. So we might as well move to where we can actually do some damage or you know cause some chaos within their ranks as well. So we can take advantage of some of our area of effect spells and hit a little bit more. And do a little bit more to these guys. Nobody is getting too close to critical hit points yet. We are going to need to land a few more life drains, though. We've missed quite a few of them. Uh, some of those, I believe the archers have some mantles on, so they're dodging our magic as well. So that was a fortunate one. That archer is taken out. Um, she's in don't act status. She's got full health. See, I think we've targeted a few times on her, of uh, the life drains, and we just have not been able to land one. But she's going to be just around the corner for a few turns. Whenever it expires on her, she will just jump back up into that platform and go right back to harming us. But at least that takes one character, uh, one enemy unit away from damaging us. And that's where we are in this part here. We're just trying to slow down the onslaught. Now, Sleep has um, a, a vertical tolerance of one there, so it actually can hit a character on the platform and then one that's a step up there inside the uh, the apparatus there. So uh, Sleep is a better choice. Paralyze has no vertical tolerance. It has to be a totally flat. So I, I would have to target characters who are on the main platform. So looking at where things go, this Sleep will actually target um, those tiles all around. 
So I'm gonna try to see how many of these characters I can get sleeping here with just just a few castings to try to get multiple of them down. Now sleep is not as durable as don't act. It lasts longer if left alone, but the enemies can just do a physical attack to wake each other up. But I don't mind them doing that because obviously it wastes their action. It does some damage and I'm, I'm happy about that as well. So if they're using up their actions and they are doing some damage to each other, that's okay with me. Confusion would be really great if you can land it, but uh, sadly it's only one target and it's also pretty weak to uh, just being knocked out by physical attack. So you won't see me use confusion in this fight. So here I'm seeing where I should move. I definitely need to move because I need to pick up the the MP. Uh, and then I want to see who, again, where can I do the most, cause the most disruption because we have so many characters right here. So I'm actually going to target silence right there. Um, and I, I can't actually get the time mage. I don't think I actually got the time mage in the silence window. But... Uh, because she didn't quite get a turn, I can maybe land silence on the time mage uh, before, right before she gets her action, and then she will not just be marked for silent, but actually be in silent status. So there's Gafgarian again. He his don't act status has expired, and so he's going to be coming back into the fray here, just just to show that you, like nothing lasts forever in the, in these fights. So I did cause some disruption. I have a sleeping, I have a sleeping archer. I may have a sleeping knight uh, once we resolve the, the other sleep spell, but I have now an oracle who's in that critical status. You can see that net knight attack uh, really knocked her down close to doom. So she is going to need to start recovering some hit points immediately. Now, unfortunately, that sleep missed on the knight. <laughs> it hit on the archer who was already being targeted. Now, let's see if this sleep, which targets three characters, can put someone else to sleep. Finally, that knight does go down. The archer has now been put to sleep three times, and the time mage who was silent is now also asleep. So we really have caused significant disruption right there. I'm happy about that. I'm unhappy about my one oracle who is in rough shape down there. And that knight seems to, I haven't checked the, the faith value um, recently looking at that one, but it seems like it must be, must be pretty low because that knight, we're gonna have a hard time landing on that knight. Seems like everybody has a tough time uh, landing <laughs> anything on that night, which is going to be really sad because we, we're we going to need him as like a, an HP reservoir. So now I need to decide, what do I want to do? Do I want to keep going for these like 65% chance life drains, 66% chance life drains? Uh, or do I try to incapacitate that night with a don't act, which may have a little bit better chance to land, but still not uh, guaranteed, still not perfect. Let's see if this Petrify will land on the Archer. It sure does, so that's good. So that that Archer is totally out of the battle now. And it actually blocks that tile, which is good. Okay, there's one Life Drain landed. That's going to be really important for us. Okay, she absolutely needs to land a Life Drain because she herself is is quite low. Uh, and But again, just the the chance to land is, is low on this Knight that's that's sitting right there. I have a 100% chance on that Knight that's up on the, on the Apparatus. But he will wake up from sleep if he takes any HP damage. So I'm between that. I could leave that knight sleeping and try to drain this other one that's got really low faith. Um, or, you know, go, go for it here. And that's what I do because of this. So because I can do this move that you're going to see, I charge the spell right there. And I'm going to move this other oracle to kind of run block for the weak one. So that if that knight gets a turn, which he will soon, uh, he will not be able to kind of sneak around. So if this life drain does indeed miss, which it does not, thankfully, she picks up a good chunk of hit points, then that knight would not be able to walk up and, and coup de gras that, that other oracle. So he would have to walk around my oracle here. He wouldn't have a straight shot. So that's why I was able to do that move. And thankfully, we did land a couple of life drains. So we picked up some, some hit points from that knight. And now here's Gafgarian. This is curious. This is actually pretty cool. Gafgarian goes for the knight sword on his own unit to wake him up. So that knight is now awake. I'm counting tiles here with Ramza to see where I want to go. And how aggressive do I want to get with them? And where you know what can I cast and when? Ramza's got full health here. He's got full full hit points. That knight is down to 44, so he's taken three life drains. He's got one life drain left in him. A life drain that lands will uh, will finish that knight off. 
but Ramza looking at, I'm also in possible stick range of that knight if I go right to his front. But Ramza looks like he's just going to move to um, target maybe a life drain to finish him off. And we have a 49% chance to land it, so coin flip to uh, put an end to this knight right here. And indeed, it does land. There it is. Ramza did not need the hit points, as some of my other oracles do, but uh, he gets it anyway. So now, thankfully, we this is, again, I can see that tide is turning a little bit. The mantle really helped us right there, because I would not like to take too many more hits from, from knights, especially while we're charging. Uh, before we can recover a little bit more. But I've got... This is another bonus. Because of Life Drain, I have another pretty decent um, HP Reservoir standing right there in the form of that knight. So if I can get some of these to land, I can I can use that knight to recover a little bit. So not just offensively uh, taking his hit points down to zero, but I can recover all of the, his, the hit points that he has brought into range of us. That's kind of a dark way to look at it, but it's uh, pretty pretty cool that we have the capability to do that. So she doesn't, at this point, have enough to cast Life Drain, but she's going to have to move anyway. Uh, she has 14 MP. Life Drain costs 16. And so you can see, you know, at this part of the battle where we're running a pretty good deficit of, um, of MP... But this knight has much higher faith, and so landing the life drains on that knight is a lot easier for us. And so she really needs uh, the hit points more than anything. So she's going to target the life drain here. She's got 100% chance to land. So that knight, because he's a lot more susceptible to landing these things, we're happy that we can kind of almost get ourselves back up to full health on the back of this knight. Now, this knight, I think, has a robe on. That's why he has a less uh, hit point pool in general, and that's why we gain less from him because I think instead of heavy armor, he has a robe. So that archer is now out of don't act status, and that's why the archer moved up and attacks the time mage to wake her up. But again, it they burned up actions, and they did damage to their own party in the process there, so that sleep was, uh, was worth it for me to, to do, of course. And so she's going to look at the attack value, and now it's huge damage, which is great, but then my life drain is going to fail from the other one, so I think that was probably a, um, a misplay right there, because I would have rather had that one pick up her uh, her HP. Now, Gafgarian has, again, moved himself. He's moving towards us. He's moving aggressively, which is what the game tells him to do, but he couldn't quite get into attack range from us, <laughs> unfortunately for him, so now we're just going to go over and put him back into don't act status. So Gafgarian, once again, uh, is not going to be able to uh, to get to us before he's once again uh, debilitated by our, our oracle magic. So I'm looking to see again where I move, because again, I need to move somewhere, at least one tile, and then I need to get an action in here. So I was, yeah, I took that knight out with a huge uh, stick attack, really mostly because I saw, I was like surprised at that damage readout. I was like, what? <laughs> but I should have, uh, in hindsight here as I'm recording it, I should have let the other oracle drain him so that her MP weren't wasted and she actually got a little bit more uh, hit points. So there's Gafgarian uh, in don't dax status yet again. And with all the knights gone, now at this point I'm feeling very good about this fight. And I'm, I'm almost in a state of disbelief right here. At, th at this point, I'm in a state of disbelief. <laughs> because the, uh, the the knights are gone, Gafgarian is, is, uh, is taken out again, and he's not going to be around for a while. So I'm looking what to do here. I could have moved into a stick attack range, but I decided not to. And uh, here's another Paralyze going to go on him. And then she didn't have enough MP for a uh, for a life drain. But that's okay. That's okay. And again, she has to move before she has enough MP for a life drain. So we're going to try to pick up a little bit more hit points from Gafgarian, who has a really nice hit point pool. Um, so if we land the life drain on him, it's going to do nice damage, and it doesn't matter that he's getting away now because we've already got that uh, targeted on him and charging. The time mages are, I think, one of them's in silence, or maybe both of them is in, are in silent status. Uh, and then that archer down there, 
she is she's fully capable again, but uh, she'll be susceptible to our magic if we can get down to her again. And a, a thought that that I that I had here is I could try to go up on the on the wall, up on the ramparts there. Silence, yeah, it won't work because she's already silent. Uh, I could try to go up on the ramparts and maybe target some characters there, but then they could just kind of move out of our way and it would take a lot longer to, to chase them down. But you can see, again, our party is kind of moving as a unit together here. And good, we did land that on Gafgarian and recovered a nice chunk of hit points because he does have a really good uh, armor setup. He's, he's quite well equipped with his armor. So Ramza is in, he's in stick range of these uh, of these time mages. He's just checking to see where can I go, who can I swing my stick at. And he's got full health, so he's going to try to recover some MP by moving and then just attacking. So he's, he's picking up MP and then just swinging the stick. And also staying out of range of the, uh, of the paralyzed spells. So that's another bonus of the sticks, is that you can stay out of range of um, area of effect spells by just uh, standing two tiles away from a character and let them take their uh, take their wax. And again, got to move so we can pick up some MP. And she's going to see if she can do the finishing touch there and pick up the last of her of her HP. Uh, yeah, I believe in this game you can indeed. Oh, nice. We're going to get a whack from the from the rod. That's funny. Or from the staff. Uh, you can indeed in this in this game get more MP than what the enemy had in their reservoir, so if they only have one hit point and you drain for 50, you can get 50 out of them. So she only has 12 hit points, I think, but this will drain for 24. And you'll see that uh, yeah, she will, she'll gain the 24. So that's something to keep in mind, that if you have a weak character, you can do that. Not a problem. And so now both time mages are down and one's already on two there. Uh, crystals are a possibility for us. They would take a few more turns to get to Crystal Town, uh, but if, if it was a really desperate situation, we could back away and uh, wait till we had some crystals to, to access. But we don't really need that uh, in, this, in this case. We don't, we're, we're not super desperate for, for that in this battle. So I'm looking to see what I can do with these characters. Uh, let's, might as well go for the Petrify. 50-50 shot on that archer. And she does that archer's bow is back online, but we have defense up and we all have pretty good uh, hit points. So we're not, we're not super worried about that. Okay, here's Ramza moving up. Uh, and he's going to try to get into range to do something. It looks like he's going yeah, to try to, do, uh, to paralyze gonna go don't act on the archer and now our sticks are actually pretty viable weapons here in this fight maybe not a little bit harder to land it with Gafgarian and his shield attacking right into his face but for that archer for sure uh, she has a, maybe a mantle on so some some evasion so Gafgarian is re-paralyzed and the archer is paralyzed again so now we can start to move in a little bit the uh, the sharks are circling and both of my targets are kind of trapped back in there, uh, in that, in their little hole. And I think because they're in don't act status, I think they're actually just going to stay uh, trapped back there. I don't think they're going to come out at us. And it, because of that, I think because of the um, the faith value of that archer, landing anything on her is going to be difficult, especially petrify, which has a lower accuracy anyway. So I'm just looking to see what I can do as I'm moving into uh, moving into position here. There's another Petrify. Gafgarian, I think, is just going to wait. Yeah, he's just going to wait. He's just going to chill. He's going to try to get some turns. There's nothing he can do. He can't act. There's nowhere for him to move, really, without getting into, uh, into the line of fire. And so you can see our sticks are really coming into play there. That's a hit for 70 on the stick for those of you keeping score at home. And now Ramza can actually, if he wants to, he can move and also be within attack range of that archer. And so that's another advantage of the sticks, is that you can attack and then have another character move in and attack on the same side. With a one-tile thing, um, that would not have been possible. But because of the sticks, we have a two-tile attack, and then Ramza can move in for the one-tile attack. And so she's looking to, where can I drain? Where can I do some damage? Gafgarian is going to have to be taken out with damage. 
he cannot be petrified. He's got that protection from that, but it doesn't matter. He's got great compatibility. We might as well do drain on him anyway. So we're going to have to use our sticks or drain life on Gafgarian. Petrified does finally land on that archer. I've got one more oracle just kind of hanging out back here. She's going to move. I don't know if she can quite reach them with her spells yet. No, so she's just going to wait. There's a crystal back there if we need it. Um, but that archer is petrified. We're going to move into position here to go after Gafgarian. We're just going to swing the sticks at him. And boom, I guess I guess there's no, um, no shield or reno there. And that is Gafgarian down right at the end. Usually you take him out first. This time we took him out last. And that is the Galgaran Execution Site. If you like this video, of course, feel free to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe, make a comment, or hit me up on Twitter, or I am also active, underscore A-T-E. We're moving right along. See you next time.